the one thing about working in a uh, government contract in IT, it's a lot of like subcontracting companies that's trying to snatch you up. <laughs> What was actually your first role at the hospital? What was your actual duties? What, what were you actually hired to do there? Okay, I remember. So yeah, my duties were pretty simple. I feel like anyone could do it, but of course you need that cert to get through the door. So pretty much you guys know nurses go through, they have to go through training, keep their training up to date every year or every two years or however it works. So pretty much they brought in a new technology system, Epic Systems. All I did as a contractor was show the nurses, doctors, hospital staff how to use the Epic system to do training. I I loaned out laptops. If they had any questions, I would answer their questions. And then we did minor troubleshooting. If it was a big technical issue, we would just pit that equipment to the side and then tell higher ups. But pretty much just train people on uh, new uh, IT gear and infrastructure. Basically, what you were doing was basically some tier one type of stuff just at mm -hmm. a hospital. Essentially, it's like a almost like a glorified help desk. Y'all know I, I love to throw the word help desk out there, even though he wasn't working technically at a help desk, but it would be like on the almost on the same level because he's actually interacting with the people showing them how to use the equipment and then like he said doing some basic troubleshooting stuff um, that's stuff that you can't find yourself doing at a help desk or just a tier one position in general so how long did you work at that hospital pretty much after i got my sir uh the contract came to the end so i want to say like five months five or six months so within five or six months were you able to build up enough experience to where you can go back out there redo your resume put it back out there start qualifying for jobs for higher paying positions did that happen with you oh yeah Oh, yeah. The reason why I'm saying that, I'm asking that is because that's what I say a lot on my YouTube channel. And so you're like a living, walking, talking testimony to that fact right there. So we moved from the hospital. What was the next opportunity that presented yourself in? How did you manage to secure that? Was it through experience, gaining higher level certifications? Like what helped you get the next role? So, yeah, that Security Plus helped me get this role I'm currently working now for the government. This is the job after the hospital that you're currently doing now. Yeah, I did interview for some other stuff. There was a data center back home but the i was in a fan of uh management and uh it's that's not to say they're a bad company but i think also you have to know your personality style so just certain personality styles just it's just kind of like a not necessary class you just it's just not a work environment you want to see yourself going to every day you know now you don't have to answer this or you could just kind of allude to it but oh uh, the salary was there well yeah we, that's where we're about to go was there a significant pay increase from your first job to your current job or oh fact, yeah what was the Matter of fact, before we even get to that, was there a significant pay increase from your job working at the grocery store to your first tech <laughs> job? How big of a difference was that? Was it was it anything uh, significant? Yeah, that was about seven dollars difference. And you know, I'm fairly young, so I was making like thirteen bucks. I was making thirteen bucks in the deli an hour, and then I got the contract position full time for the hospital for twenty an hour. I was so thankful for that. I was able to start paying money aside, test up, test for these certs. I think I even like donate and uh, yeah, man. Now going from the first tech job at the hospital to what you currently do now was there a significant pay difference there oh yeah so uh, i think what that's like forty thousand a year for so then i went from 40 to like 60 and now i just got recently promoted congratulations as a thank you but the company might be mad because uh the one thing about working in a uh, government contract in it it's a lot of like subcontracting companies that's trying to snatch you up so it's another company throwing eighty thousand my way seventy five thousand, and i'm like i like this company but they dangling this carrot over here so that's a good opportunity so so you went from 13 dollars an hour working at the <laughs> deli making them good ass public sandwiches because them sandwiches be slapping to entertaining job contracts or job offers for like eighty five, ninety thousand dollars mm -hmm. in like two years. Mm -hmm. Started off yep. knowing pretty much nothing about tech. You say you're 10 certifications deep up in this thing. Mm -hmm. So you said you got A plus, Net plus, Security plus, Linux. What other search did you say you, you got? Uh, I got Azure 900, Microsoft AI, Artificial Intelligence. And then you get, I get like two stackable search. So if you get the A plus and Net plus, you get a stackable search. So you just mm -hmm. get a search for getting those two. And then if you get the Security plus, you get another stackable search. So yeah, so two stackable certs. These are things that people like to show off on on LinkedIn. They'll put the list their stackable certs. Matter of fact, when you guys go past your A plus, net plus and security plus when you log into the portal the comp to your portal to actually download your cert you'll see those stackable certifications up in there and also another thing about that when you pass a higher level cert 
it automatically renews your lower level cert. So let's just say your A plus expires tomorrow, but you pass the network plus today. Well, your A plus is now renewed the moment you pass the network plus and it's good for at least another three years. So you went from $13 an hour to damn near $85,000 a year, or at least you're entertaining those job offers right now. Oh, yeah. Would you say that this is probably one of the best decisions that you ever made in your life so far? Oh, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Because uh, I'm the type of man I need, like, I got to have my own place. And the way I was living, I was like, I was living with other people. I just, you know, I couldn't do it, man. I come home, it's peaceful. I got savings. I don't know. It's nice. It's nice. So. And uh, Arizona, like I said, it's a huge difference. Like, um, Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You didn't mention that. So his job that he currently, I'm not trying to put all your business out there, but his current job is in another state, pretty much on the West Coast of America. <laughs> Even though he's from Florida, you know what I'm saying? You were telling me you actually got our entertaining job offers in the state of Hawaii right now. Is that correct? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, once you get your clearance, there's a website, I think it's called clearancejobs.com. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. When, when uh, Tech G tell you guys about, he knows what he's talking about. I am living proof. There's a website called clearance jobs. And you pretty much put your resume on there once you have your security clearance. And then you have different subcontracting companies. They uh, reach out to you, give you opportunities. I had a couple co-workers. They worked in Hawaii. They they actually accepted some of those positions. This is the difference between the, me and them. A lot of them have family and kids and stuff like that. I don't have any. They felt like the money wasn't good enough to be in Hawaii. But from what I'm seeing, the money is almost 80, six figures to be in Hawaii. I'd take that, you know. So what level of clearance do you have? Uh, Just secret. There's one job opportunity where I might get a TS top secret. Yeah, you want to get that. Well, if possible. Well, I've had a TS clearance since 2003. And basically, the higher your clearance level, the more potential income you can derive because obviously the higher the clearances are, the harder they are to get. And also, you, to get a clearance, you, you want to make sure that you don't have anything crazy in your background. We're not just talking about criminal records, but they're also talking about, do you pay your bills on time? Is your credit history looking good? Like, do you are, do you, are you out there handling business as a grown man is supposed to? Because if you're out there taking out crazy debts, not paying your bills, that can affect you potentially affect your clearance as to whether or not you'll be able to get one and or keep it if you already have one so those are some things to keep in mind but if you do get a clearance you decide to get into the government side of things it's a lot of potential money because i know everybody's like all about the private sector i want to work at fang you know facebook amazon netflix google and all that stuff that's fine that's cool but government contracts they kicking out big money they kick out a lot of money and you don't necessarily have to deploy to the mid east to go get the big money as well you can be right here stay side in America and get it cracking like that even with a clearance. Matter of fact, where I live at, NASA is right down the street. They got IT people that work at NASA that got to have clearances to work up in there. There's some other, what's, what's that company that makes a lot of the airplane parts? Lockheed. Yeah, Lockheed Martin. They're mm -hmm. down the street as well. So, you know, these are just a whole bunch of things that, you know, you guys should think about as you're out there traversing the world of IT.